Chapter 1. Having free time encourages you to focus on your health and well-being. Learning how not to always be working isn't centered on working less, stopping work, or not having a job at all. It's about taking time out to understand what work really means. In 2015, Marley Grace was married and working at a shop and artist's residency called Have Company in Michigan. One of her favorite hobbies was, and still is, knitting, and she uses it as a coping mechanism for anxiety and depression. Suddenly, she decided to start selling yarn at Have Company, hence turning her hobby into work. Marley Grace got so consumed with work that she kept at it nonstop. For example, if she was with her spouse, she was constantly checking her mail. When she was knitting, she was always taking note of the process. She continued generating income for her business without knowing that she was getting obsessed. As time went on, her marriage ended and she had to relocate to California. So Marley Grace became her own boss and it was bittersweet. She could work at her own pace without anyone ordering her around or telling her what to do. However, Marley Grace was entirely on her own with no one to depend on, and it was so scary. She got so lost in work that she neglected her health and body. Gradually, she started learning how to be deliberate about not working. Learning how to work less makes you feel like you're in control of your life. This summary is based on Marley Grace Life Lessons. You will learn when to get away from working and prioritize self-care. It also gives suggestions on how you can make good use of your time. It's easy to feel like suddenly those emails left unopened are going to completely destroy you, but they're not. Marley Grace Chapter 2 Understanding what work means helps you create a boundary around it. Usually, we are of the wrong opinion that whatever we do that is hard is work and what is easy is not work. Your job may be your work, but not always. We may have some jobs we enjoy doing. They feel effortless, and after having a truckload of them, they eventually do feel like work. You are exhausted. You feel like you haven't rested. You've forgotten to drink water, exercise, or take a break. When you love doing something, it can be hard to feel like you're working when doing it. So to make that boring admin or paperwork done, make it fun to do. Play music. Do fun things to erase the process. Work is subjective. You could have a hobby, but when you start seeing it as a source of income, it could eventually become work. When things on your work list become the only things you do, it hurts your spirit. Friendships, relationships, and even your business will suffer. Being aware of what overworking does to you and those around you will set you on the right path. The first step to not always working is to identify what work is to you. Make a list of all the things you consider as work. Be relaxed while you're at it so you can get it all. Now that you have made this list, you can delegate to ease up on all that you have to do. A delegation will not only make life easier for you, but it also provides jobs for other people. Don't be hard on yourself. Take it easy. After you've done all these, write out why you're grateful for your work or what about your work that you're thankful for. Always working proved to be completely unsustainable for my mental health and also for those around me. Marley Grace Chapter 3 Get somewhere you can tag as your workspace and take time out to relax. There is no right way a workspace should or should not be. All that matters is that it is how you want it to be. If you don't have one, get yourself a table space. It could be something small that you can identify as your space. Set it up and put your favorite things on it. Anything to make your space just like you want it. Let your dream workspace support your style of work. Add things that make you comfortable and encourage you to do more. Always have a time where you stop work and you just turn off your phone and do other things. Write down a list of all the things you do that are not your work. 
Just doing this alone will make you more accessible because you can have an overview of those things you spend your time on. You need to identify your time in a day. Figure out your work time, personal time, and sleep time. Marley Grace identifies hers with a no phone from 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. rule. Now, this doesn't mean she turns off her data or puts her phone on airplane mode. She merely turns off the phone and has no access to it until 10 a.m. Before 10 a.m., after waking up, she prays, meditates, sips some coffee, reflects, reads, and writes. Decide what you do and will do during your work-free period. Some people decide their mornings are work-free while others use their evenings. Pick out which one works for you. Marley Grace stops all work at 4 p.m. You need to study your time to know when you can finish work activities. Later in the evening, say by 9.30, her mind understands that she only has 30 minutes of phone time left, so she brushes off the little things, sends the final emails, and settles in by 10 p.m. Get yourself a nighttime ritual. Marley Grace has little to no screen time. She relaxes, reads, has that good bowl of ice cream, and lights her candles. You can also do the same or do something that suits your lifestyle and personality. Chapter 4. Be able to identify the gray areas in your work and ensure you stick to something rewarding. Gray areas are ill-defined situations or areas in which it is difficult to judge what is right and what is wrong. Simply put, they are those things you do that you just cannot decide to stop doing or not. There could be many gray areas in your work. You need to figure it out. Whether it is posting all your day-to-day activities on social media or whatever, find it. One way is for you to study the things you do in a day. Marley Grace identified hers in sharing her rituals and survival self-care practices and in the research on how to work better. Mind you, it doesn't mean that utilizing social media is a bad idea, but unless you're making money or gaining something from it, you have to consider it being a gray area. Marley Grace realized that she was always working without attending to other parts of her life. She decided to work in a way that allowed her to stay committed to herself, her business, and her family. Artist duo Peter Fishley and David Weiss provided a list of things we can do that will make us work better. Do one thing at a time. Know the problem. Learn to listen. Learn to ask questions. Distinguish sense from nonsense. Accept change as inevitable. Admit mistakes. Say it simple. Be calm. Smile. You don't have to run away from your gray areas. Just ensure that they don't distract you from your priorities. Knitting is Marley Grace's biggest gray area because she uses it to relax and forget about the day. Marley Grace advises that you find an oracle or a tarot deck that speaks to you or take a bunch of note cards and write words you love on them or collage images that are inspiring to you. Write down your findings and notice what keeps repeating itself. Chapter 5. Taking a break from your phones will increase your productivity. Identify the parts of your work that don't feel like work, honor them, and make them unique. For example, many of us are addicted to our phones, and it has a way of making us feel like everything is work. If you can understand this addiction, you're on the right track. To overcome your addiction, Delete all your apps, even if it's for a whole day or a week. Get a flip phone or one that has little to no access to the internet. A flip phone reduces your options of phone use and slows you down, so it is good. Use a phone box. It can be any box. You will have to put your phone in there for some time and not touch or use it. Leave it there. Then you write, read, or do anything else. Stick to your time and stay off the phone. Get an app like Moment Freedom or Self-Control. This might contradict the first tip, but these apps monitor your screen time and phone use. If you use it well, you can moderate your use and stay in the green. You can restrict app usage or even the sites you visit to keep clear of distractions. 
Put your phone on airplane mode when you sleep. Set strict phone hours or adopt a no phone after a certain time rule. At first, taking a break might seem deliberate and forced, but with time it becomes natural. You ease into it. Taking a break can mean different things depending on you and what you do for work and fun. It could be making a healthy meal or listening to music or taking a walk. You won't be surprised to find that even cooking for yourself can sometimes seem like a lot of work. Marley Grace finds solace in yoga, stretching, light movement, and peaceful techniques. Even though this can be her work as well, she uses some to take a break. Chapter 6. Avoid comparing yourself with others and stop being too hard on yourself so you can appreciate your uniqueness. For most of us, it is easy to look at the perception of others' success and compare it to how well we are doing. We use others as a scale to rate if we are working or otherwise how we are not. Anxieties and fear keep us alive as humans, but this doesn't mean we need to let it consume us. Find healthy ways to manage your anxieties so it doesn't lead to physical health issues. If you find yourself clamped working or you get behind on work, your deadlines are close and there's a lot of stuff on the line. Telling yourself, I've messed up, isn't the way forward. There is no such thing. There is only shifting and rearranging. You pick up from where you left off and make the necessary steps to get you back on track. Just being hopeful that a tricky situation will disappear doesn't work. You have to be honest and open with yourself and willing to create clarity where there is vagueness. Perhaps you have thought there is no place in the world for you or that there's not enough time to do what you mapped out to do. You're mistaken. We need you. There's always a place for you. To solve the not having enough time issue, Write out your dream projects in their order of importance and give out timelines to complete them. It works wonders. Everything you do can feel like so much work. Working on yourself can feel like so much work that it is easier to give up on trying. To make things less like work, do the following tasks. Avoid isolation. Engage in songs and dance. Write gratitude lists. Reach out and ask for help. Find yourself support groups, therapy, or sharing circles. Many times, you're not alone in your struggles. Don't forget that. You have to be flexible and practice the art of saying no if you are a yes person. Our work is whatever we say it is, and we just have to figure out what that means for us. Did you know? According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, 18.1% of Americans are affected by anxiety disorder yearly. Conclusion How to not always be working isn't about working or finding a balance in the midst of all your different jobs. It is about paying attention to every person, moment, or gift. It is about loving being alive so much that you live. Being too consumed with work affects you and those around you your spirit, mental health, friendships, partnerships, and business. The awareness of the negative impact of overworking is healing in itself. Try to identify what's not your work to stop wasting time on things that do not matter. Look for the gray areas in your daily activities, but learn to do one thing at a time. One significant way to not work when not working is to switch off your phone to spend time alone. Being alone is crucial for self-development and allows you to know yourself. Also, taking a healthy break between work is very important. It could be something as simple as taking a walk or making a meal. For example, Marley Grace sees making a salad as the greatest gift of not working. Sometimes we compare ourselves with others because we feel they are more successful. We forget our own achievements and concentrate on the mistakes we have made. We have forgotten that even the most successful of us usually have bad days. Comparing ourselves with others compromises our ability to trust and leads to self-devaluation. Embrace your uniqueness and work on your weakness. 
Train yourself to always create time for relaxation, creativity, and self-care. Try this. A time may come when you feel unaccomplished or that nothing is working. Just take a deep breath and exercise some self-love to boost confidence in yourself.